everybody. Um, welcome to online learning here at ESMEC. Uh, I'm Mr. Schultz. I'm just one of the history teachers here, and I will be guiding you through some of the major things that led to the birth of the Renaissance. So um, let's just kind of talk about really quickly what you'll need for today. So um, whether you're using Canvas or Google Classroom, you should find a handout called something along the lines of Introduction to the Renaissance. Uh, you'll need that to help you with note taking and the video we're going to watch. You're going to watch in a little bit. Uh, also, there will be a video that you'll be watching on the Silk Road that will be posted on either one of the platforms. Just make sure you have uh, access to both of these things. All right. Uh, also, just before we get started, just to let you know, what will be required of you when you're done with this is that there will be uh, that video guide, that note taking sheet has some summary questions at the end that you will need to turn in. We'll talk about that more later, but the expectation is that you're going to take the notes, watch the video, answer the questions, and then answer those summary questions at the end. And we'll talk more about what that means in terms of what you have to do. All right, so hopefully everyone's got what they need. If you don't, pause this and then start it when you're ready to go. All right, with that being said, let's go. All right, so on the top of your sheet, you should see a couple boxes, uh, one for each one of these topics. Uh, what we're basically talking about today is the rise of the Renaissance. Uh, you probably heard of it. If you haven't, it's this time period in history where it's this kind of return to Greek and Roman thinking. But here's the thing, like any great moment in history, it just doesn't happen, right? You, you, stuff leads to that. And so there's two big factors here we're going to talk about and then get into greater depth about both of them. So first one is increased wealth, all right? Here's the thing. There is this new group called merchants that emerge. And it's not as if merchants didn't exist before. If we go back a little bit, we should talk about how during the Roman period, they had tremendous wealth. But when Rome fell, uh, they lost their currency. They lost their trade network. They lost um, the things that united them, the safety of the roads. So that kind of went away. But by the end of the Middle Ages, you will see this new group of merchants emerge. And guess what merchants have? Money. And guess what money can do? It can buy you stuff. It can allow you to support artists and art in general. So we need this new, all this new money to be able to create the new work of arts that come out of the Renaissance. All right, the other factor, the Black Death. All right, so bubonic plague, Black Death, whatever you want to call it. Um, so we'll get into this a little bit later, but it was really strange. A sudden drop in the population brought on by the Black Death will lead to... Um, I hate I'll use the expression, a silver lining. Uh, suddenly food gets cheaper, all right? Suddenly the social structure of Europe gets completely changed around. And that will allow for, you know, the rise of new groups of people. Uh, also, the church, and we'll get into this in a little bit, struggles to have solutions to the problem. And so then people begin to look other places. And that will make more sense as we get through this. All right, so the first thing you're going to want to do is there's a very brief video um, that you should have posted for you online. Uh, it's a crash course video, so if you did any of that review stuff we gave you, uh, it's just like one of those. So it's John Green. He talks way, way, way too fast. So do yourself a favor, okay? Um, slow it down. Pause it if you need to. The important thing is that you get the answers. And again, we're not looking for one or two word answers. We're looking for complete answers um ideas so if you need to pause the video to make sure you get the full information so go ahead and pause me so that you can go watch that video and we'll come back together and what we're going to do it when we're done is i'll give you three big takeaways that you should have got out of the video not going over the answers but the things that matter the most all right pause me i'll see you in a second All right, hopefully you watch the video now and you have all that information. Now, there's three big takeaways I think we should get out of the Silk Road. All right, first of all, um, products are really, really, really expensive. All right, the video kind of talks about it. If you look at this map up here for a second, Silk Road spans from here all to here and then over to here. So essentially, you could get goods going from China all the way to Europe. Um, the video talked about these merchants would take the videos along or take these products along the trade route. They themselves would never take it all the way across now because they would buy it from somebody in china maybe bring it 200 miles and then sell it to somebody else here's the thing let's say you bought it in china for five bucks whatever it was right 
and then you sell it to that new person, you're not going to charge them like six. You're not going to charge or five what you paid for it. You're going to charge them like 10 or 15. And then that person will then do the same exact thing. So by the time that product goes from here all the way over here, that thing's going to be super duper expensive. All right. And the reason it's a big deal. And here's the thing. These might just say products are very expensive. You might want to jot the details I'm giving you right now. Here's the deal, right? Because things were so expensive. If you're European, you're tired of paying through the nose from stuff from China or India. So guess what you're going to decide to do? At some point, you're going to be super motivated to get in a boat and come here and get to the stuff yourself. Does that make sense? So the reason I'm kind of taking a second on it, it's going to help explain why Europeans begin exploration in part. All right. Major other thing, a new wealthy class. Um, if we remember from the Middle Ages, wealth was based off of one thing really, right? Pause, what was that one thing? That's right. Oh, land, land. Yeah, you got to own land, right? And so land was the most important thing. But here's the thing. When we're talking about the movement of products, especially these products here, things like carpets, jade, spices, silk, glass, all these things are super expensive. You can make so much money selling those things, meaning... You don't need land to be rich anymore. You can be rich based off the stuff you buy and sell. So a new landless class of people begin to emerge. So that, again, upheaval of feudalism, an end of feudalism. And then lastly, the Silk Road was super important in the spread of knowledge and diseases. Um, sometimes that knowledge, as John Green went on and on and on and on and on about, was like religion. But sometimes that knowledge is actual practical things, useful things, inventions, so what we'll see here is this. A lot of the inventions of China and India that might have otherwise kind of stayed there because of that increased rate of things like the Silk Road will make their way to Europe and other parts of the Middle East and even North Africa. That's going to lead to kind of just this compounding process of new knowledge. Now, the other thing I noted here was disease. That's kind of what we're going to get into very quickly. All right. So that will be the Black Death. Again, John Green talked about it, so you should probably understand that. Now, other things we want to talk about. Because of all this new trade, Europe begins to see towns rise. All right, these are the causes. So remember, after the fall of Rome, all the towns, people fled towns because they were unsafe, there wasn't structure, there wasn't a currency. So people began to go to feudalism and live on manners. Now, because there's a way of making money and there's wealth that can be generated, in another way, towns begin to emerge. So why? Well, the Crusades. Um, I know some of us were kind of talking about this right before we had this weird break, but the Crusades was that fight between Europeans and Muslims in the Middle East. Europeans go to the Middle East, they find all these new cool things like spices and clothes that are not itchy like wool, and now they can wear silk and it's so much better. And so they don't want to go back to Europe to the old crappy food and uncomfortable clothes. So what do they do? they basically begin to demand those goods. And so when there's a demand, people begin to give it to you. So the Crusades helped to set up the demand. The Crusades set up the safe travel routes between Europe and the Middle East, and the Silk Road fed all of that. So now towns exist to be a place to sell all of this. All right, the other big impact uh, or causes uh, or cause of the rise of towns is suddenly we have stable governments. Again, feudalism. Kings weren't powerful. They needed their lords to give them literally their money and their soldiers. That's not power. But because of the Crusades, all of these lords who were powerful died off. The kings reclaimed all that land. And suddenly, kings were growing in power. And so they could begin to create a more stable environment, one that towns could flourish in. And here's the truth, right? We talked about this in Rome. If it's not stable, then nobody's going to trade. So now having strong central governments from kings meant people felt comfortable they could invest instead of businesses. So again, all of this is going to lead to the rise of towns. Now let's talk about the effects of that. All right, so the effects. One, a birth of a modern economy. Listen, when Rome, again, I keep going back to Rome here because it was such an important moment in European history, right? But when Rome went out, all, the currency went with it. But now that we've got trade, People aren't going to say, oh, that's a lovely silk. I'll give you four goats for it. No, they want cash. They want gold. They want silver. So suddenly we begin to see the rise of currency again. Also, we see the rise of banks. Banks lend out money. Banks made it possible for people to begin to start to build businesses. So again, it's all coming together. The other thing 
uh, that's worth mentioning here are this thing called guilds. Guilds were like people who had a certain skill set. So you might be good at making hats. You might be a blacksmith, person who works with like metal, a uh, person who makes like um, barrels, whatever it is. You had a really specific skill set. Well, all those people decided, let's get together and let's set up some rules and training and standards. Uh, why? Because they want to make sure that that they are respected, that people don't think they're cheats. Because if people think you're a cheat, then they don't buy things from anymore. So guilds help to create what becomes modern regulation. So today, if you want to be you know, a doctor, you got to go to medical school and pass tests and all this stuff. If you wanted to be a hat maker, you have to do all these, you have to be an apprentice for like seven years. So the idea that to do a job, you need to be educated in it, well, that's kind of a modern idea. So we start seeing that stuff back then. All right, increase interaction. So what we start to see is the spread of ideas, um, of culture. So with the Renaissance, the ideas of the Renaissance in Italy, all right, they start there, but then they'll quickly go north because of trade routes, right? And then we'll see inventions during the Renaissance that because of this interconnection, that idea that some brilliant guy like, I don't know, Leonardo da Vinci came up with, it just doesn't die with him. It goes someplace else, right? Now, the downside of this, and we'll get to it in a second, is the spread of disease, like the Black Death. Um, the Black Death, and this is worth noting if you want to jot it down, killed roughly 40 to 50% of the population of Europe. Um, and it also did something very similar in China. Um, because people were now more connected, because people were now living closer to one another, diseases could spread really easily, and the Black Death is a classic example of that. And then the last thing on this slide, and then we got one more, is... So suddenly there's all this new money being made. All right, and remember in feudalism, kings got their money from lords. So if a lord didn't want to pay them, then the king might have to actually force them to do that. Now with trade and businesses, suddenly you've got this new source of money. Now more money means more stable kings. This is the big thing here, Can follow me here. If you're a king who suddenly has money, you don't need lords, right? So lord's power is gonna fall. Also, you don't need lords for an army. Why? Because you have the money to pay for your own soldiers. So this is a game changer for kings. Kings are going to become unbelievably powerful eventually, which gets us to a phase we call absolutism. But that's that's a couple units away. Don't worry about it right now. All right. Now, the effects of the Black Death. This is kind of, we kind of touched on what it was. What matters more in terms of what the leading to the Renaissance is this. So a couple things. The decline of the church is a big factor here. The Black Death killing millions of people. It was an ugly, nasty disease. Um, and so here's the problem. People look to the church because the church was the most powerful thing in the world, or at least in Europe, excuse me. And when the church can provide no help, people begin to lose faith, right? Um, one of the famous stories is there was a pope who took the bodies of the infected, blessed this river in France, and chucked them in there, which obviously just makes things worse. All right, but when the church can't provide answers, and it is ugly and as nasty as it was, where everyone is dying around you, you begin to think that maybe you pick the wrong side. Maybe you're being punished by God. And the fact that the Pope said that he is the voice of God and he can't stop any of this mess, eh, people began to, to look for other people or other ways of thinking. All right, again, Renaissance. All right, finally, the rise of serfs. With so many people dying, all right, serfs begin to begin to demand more money. They get more freedom. Serfs, the reason serfs had no money is because they were often forced because there was such a large population to take whatever they could get. Well, suddenly with this demand for skilled labor or work of any kind, serfs were in a great position to ask for more. So they got better wages, they could get better jobs. And again, the whole system of feudalism is being upended, right? We're seeing a whole new uh, uh, culture and society and economy emerge in Europe, which is basically the Renaissance. All right, so last, real quick, got those summary questions you're looking at, right? What you need to do is you need to answer the questions. One, incomplete sentences, no couple words here or there. Answers must come from the video. If you start Googling this stuff and writing random things that are not mentioned in this video or our notes, you're not getting credits. All right, and then finally, you must turn in that sheet through uh, Canvas or Google Classroom. Upload a copy of it. You have it digitally. Just go ahead and put it in there, and that will be your grade. You will be graded for not only getting it done, but also the accuracy. All right, cool. Thanks for coming. I hope you enjoyed it. There will be many more of these to come. See you.